welcome back to hashtag we are the church which is looking at what the seventh day adventist church is doing in the south pacific division through the power of god and we will be a thriving adventist movement living our hope in jesus and transforming the pacific so Liddy, what have we got up first? First up, we're going to hear a devotional from the President of the Trans-Pacific Union, uh, Pastor Marveni Kofanonga. Then? Then are we going to have a song and a story from someone who is on the front line uh, serving patients which, who have had coronavirus. But let's pray first. Father in heaven, we just thank you. We're back and uh, we just thank you for your church that you loved, that you gave your life for and that we live out our lives to give honour and glory to you. As we share this time together, please bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Sit back, you'll enjoy it. We are the church. Welcome to my local church. Pacific Desri Evangelistic Centre that is located in the heart of Suva. A church that was built to cater for our university students that are here. Every Sabbath, when this church opened, about 200 students from all over the Pacific attend this church here. It is meant for evangelism work and at the same time to train our young people with the core mission of our church. For we are the church. We are the one that Revelation 12, verse 17 talks about that. We are the one that keeps the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We are the one that proclaim the three angels' message of Revelation 14, the everlasting gospel to be spread to the whole world. We are the church that was commissioned by Jesus Christ in, in Matthew 24, verse 14, where we are to take the gospel to the whole world before the end will come. Yes, we are that people. We are God's people. We are his followers that carry his mission to the whole world. I, I like how Jesus Christ made that mission very, very simple. In the book of uh, Mark chapter 16, and verse 15, and I like how the God's words translation put it, where it simply says, Then Jesus said to them, So whatever, wherever you go in the world, tell everyone about the good news. You see, friends, despite everything that is going on in our world today, there is good news to this world. What is this good news? The good news that God loved this world so much that he gave his son so that whoever believes in him is not going to perish in our sin but to have everlasting life. That is good news. That is good news. And Jesus Christ simply says, we are to tell this good news wherever we go in the world. So tell it to your family. Tell it to your friends. Tell it to your colleagues at school, at work. Tell it to your neighbors. It's a very simple concept, principle. We can be able to transform the Pacific by just sharing it with our friends, our neighbors, and they will share it with the next one. That is really the concept of the world changes. Sharing it to somebody else to your friends, and they will continue to share it with others. John Wesley once said, Give me just 100 people that hate sin and love God with all their heart, and we can transform the whole world. And is it? You go around in all our Pacific Islands, Wesleyan Church dominate our Christian same principle that he said from Jesus Christ that I'm challenging you today. Wherever you go in the world, tell the good news. The good news about God's life. We are the church. We are the one that has been given 
It is commissioned by Jesus Christ. Are you going to join me today in declaring that we are the church? My fellow workers at the Trans-Pacific Union also declare that we are the church. We are the church. What about you? on the TV and I don't like what I see people hurting and suffering I want to go home so come, come back, back soon cause we really need you here oh God come back soon so we can go home where we My job during this pandemic is I'm a nurse, um, a nurse with two roles. The first one is um, as a clinical nurse educator and the other role is actually pretty much in contact with um, COVID patients. It's affected me personally, it's um, affected my life, how even now we all sleep in different rooms and um, the way we live has changed because of this. and. Another thing is, this experience is actually um, changed me closer to God. I appreciate every little thing that God gave me, and um, like going like for me, every day is a gift. When I open my eyes, the first thing you know what I do? I just put my hands on my forehead, like, oh, I have no temperature. Thank you, Jesus. That is huge. I just sometimes in tears, just knowing I don't have the temperature in the morning after looking after COVID patient. And um, and I remember it was like went to the um, shop, did my gro grocery shopping, and un unload that from the bags. I was actually in tears, that's never happened before because I know during this time a lot of people struggling with financially. So every little thing that I took for granted all this time, I really, really appreciate it so much. Adventist Healthcare, which includes the SAN and SAN Day Surgery Hornsby, is proud to be serving its community during these very testing times of COVID. It's fair to say no one has experienced in living memory the upheaval of a global pandemic and the economy at the same time. The impact on the SAN has been felt particularly since the 25th of March, when all elective surgery across Australia was cancelled. This was part of a national strategy 
to protect staff and patients and to preserve critical stocks of personal protective equipment, PPE. Cancelling elective surgery means we're doing 70% less surgery than usual, which affects our patients and our finances. The SAN is working with all levels of government on an agreement whereby the SAN keeps all of its staff and facilities ready to care for public patients in addition to our private patients. In return, the government guarantees funding for the period of the pandemic. In the past few months, we've undertaken extensive planning, staff training and upskilling. At times, it has been hard to source supplies made scarce during the pandemic. We have made PPE, gloves, masks, protective gowns, sanitizer, a matter of focused prayer. At one stage, we had only 10 days supply of PPE left, and we believe it was an answer to prayer that we received donated masks as well as masks from government stores at just the right time. We've cared for six patients with COVID during the last two months, and three COVID positive staff have been diagnosed. I have received a few calls of concern from church family that, have, that the SAN has been impacted by COVID. Our entire purpose mission is to extend the healing ministry of Christ. And he never turned people away. Neither do we. The SAN is one of only three private hospitals in New South Wales that has an emergency department. And all cases of COVID we've had have arrived at our emergency department. Those six patients with COVID have recovered and there has been no spread of COVID to other patients or staff. Despite the many challenges, we have been blessed with fantastic support from our local community. Individuals and businesses donated gifts of food and Easter eggs for our staff and Fox SDA Church provided free hot drinks on Sabbath. Many people have sent letters, cards of encouragement, including from local school children and our volunteers, and continue to pray for us. Our chaplains not only provide spiritual care for our inpatients, they have offered a 24-hour hotline for the local community and for Adventist healthcare uh, workers and GPs throughout Australia. We've also had incredible engagement from our doctors, supporting us in all stages of planning, review, their expertise and wise counsel. The SAN Foundation has worked hard to raise funds during this time, and we've been blessed with generous donors. Amidst the COVID chaos, life goes on, and our community needs the hospital services unrelated to COVID. I'd like to end with an amazing story of a life saved. In April, a mother, after a fairly routine birth, started hemorrhaging. After many, many hours, 98 units of blood products, and with 30 plus people from multiple departments fighting for her life, she was stabilized. The obstetrician called it a modern day miracle. We are so grateful to have such amazing doctors and staff, and we praise God for his care over this new family and for the way he continues to bless the hospital. We do have extraordinary people working at the SAN and SAN Day Surgery, Hornsby. I thank each one for their care, living the SAN's mission during very challenging times. We thank you for your continued prayers and we pray for God's protection over you also. Thank you so much. We can really thank God for all of those who are involved in health ministry. And coming up next, we've got a report from the Papatoi Church in Auckland, New Zealand, who are sharing with us the stories of what they've been involved in during this COVID crisis. And then we've got some more from Fiji and some great stories also from the Solomon Islands. Stay with us. Today I'd love to share with you two stories of uh, two people who are homeless and these homeless people have been coming to our church. Every Thursday night before the lockdown we used to have community dining and um, 
uh, these homeless people uh, needed our help uh, in those days. But you know, through COVID-19, they actually need more of our help today. As we uphold uh, Isaiah 58, that we need to uh, feed the hungry, um, clothe the, the poor, put shelter on them that are, uh, are homeless. And uh, I feel that um, this is the time that we as a church can be uh, more active in this way and uh, uphold uh, uh, Isaiah 58. So Wayne, um, so I, I, I hear that you've been um, the two go man that, uh, that has been uh, feeding some of the, the guys here through uh, our people that are bringing food in. What kind of food have you been um, dishing out? Do we know they bring in um, a tray of pasta or lasagna yeah? and I go from one end of the beach right up to the other and they take a line and then I come back and what's left over I might have some but usually I don't. Oh, I see there, there needs to be somebody always out there that needs it for me. So Wayne, from, uh, to our Papsa family, what would you like to say to our Papsa family listening to you right now? God bless and may Jesus be with you. Because he does love us all. Yeah. Nobody else does, he does. So, Ma, um, you, you've now got a, a, a tent uh, from uh, donated from a, a brother from perhaps uh, Apu. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, just a, a question: What other needs that you might be uh, in need of? Well, one of the things I need right now is winter clothes because clothes that are, I'm wearing at the moment—that's all I've got. And so I'm scrambling to find warm clothes, especially in weather like today. Because in case you haven't noticed, I'm dripping wet. <laughs> Um, I know you've been uh, involved with our Papsa Church for a while now. What would you like to say to our Papsa family? Thank you, thank you so much for all the things you've, you've aided us to do stuff. You were with the, the one night stays for the last couple of years where we've been freezing our butts off and we've got the mattresses to sleep on in a warm space. Those are wonderful, especially when you've got weather like today. Um, but the meals when, with Lynn and Denver, the, the work that they do is so wonderful. And because of my allergies, they know I've got them and they actually, if they're doing a meal that, that doesn't, or has things that I'm allergic to, they'll do something special just to say for me. And I love the camaraderie. When we go there, we can laugh, we can joke, we can talk, we can ask questions, we can do different things. And on the whole, we make different friends from it. And it's just been really, really wonderful going there back and forth, which is why I've been going for the last two years. Blovenaka, happy Sabbath to all uh, listeners out there. Uh, I am Savanatha Shotimbao, currently here in uh, Senganga. I've been locked down here for the past uh, week since the lockdown has started. Uh, Pete, I've been using a digital media platform for the past 20 years, and um, it's very convenient. Uh, uh, recently, I've used the digital media platform to, to share the gospel with uh, f uh, family and friends. And uh, they have given me uh, a response that they found comfort and peace through the Bible text and uh, the uh, videos and audio recording that I used in uh, both platform, uh, WhatsApp and uh, Facebook. Uh, recently, in uh, during this uh, lockdown, uh, people have been searching for answers. They've been looking and asking questions as to what will happen after this. And uh, through, the, through the sharing of the gospel uh, using this digital platform, uh, it is convenient that you can share the gospel from the convenient of your, from the comfort of your own home. Um, they, uh, it has been received well by my friends and families, and uh, they have um, responded and um, give thanks to the Lord that they have found peace uh, in this, uh, in this, through this platform. Uh, I use uh, both the platform of uh, Facebook and WhatsApp uh, to start watch party and also to share um, uh, audio recordings 
on uh, the book of Revelation. And but, uh, they have uh, responded well, and they have uh, keep on encouraging me to, to share the message with them because they have found uh, peace and comfort through the message that, uh, that we have said. We want to thank God because so far there has been no cases of COVID-19 recorded in this nation. The government on the 25th of March declared a state of emergency. After one week, it extended it for four months. And so it will go on until the middle or the end of July this year. The government has encouraged the people to practice important measures like hand washing, social distancing, and other measures. In February, we had the training of the youth because this year, 2020, has been declared the year of the youth throughout the Trans-Pacific Union. And so we trained about 350 young people in the middle of February. And after that, the young people went to the local churches and the villages and the church communities to prepare for the July harvest this year. The health department of our church in Solomon Islands has contributed to assisting the government in giving public health messages about the coronavirus to its members and the public at large in the areas of prevention. I think the most important thing that we need to tell our people is not to panic or frightened of nothing because the virus is not yet here, but they must uphold the basic health prevention practices advocated by the Ministry of Health and Medical Services and the church to mitigate any domestic transmission should the virus finds its way into the country. In the Solomon Islands, there is still a lot of fear among the population. The overwhelming frightened state of the people is such that they even ignored the warning that came before Cyclone Harold that hit the country on Thursday night, 2nd April 2020. I had the privilege to interview one of the security officers of the Solomon Islands Sports Authority who said that he and his colleagues literally went onto the ship making or asking people to get off the boat, but no one listened despite telling them about the cyclone forecast warning of bad weather with strong winds and high seas that were to come that night. This is how frightened people were of nothing and putting their lives at risk of something that is more dangerous and deadly, like Category 2 Cyclone Harold. Because there has been no cases, the government has not given any orders for a complete um, ban on social gatherings. So we are, we are still able to have our weekly prayer meetings and also our Sabbath services in all our local churches. We have been concentrating on the use of the media and we thank God that we have the Hope FM and, uh, and also the Hope Channel uh, television. For the last eight weeks we have been preaching on the Hope FM. Our pastors have been preparing series of messages which is broadcasted as far as possible throughout the country. We have started on the Elijah Project in Honiara. This is where 14 groups of youths from 14, the 14 organized churches in Honiara are preaching on the Hope Channel. And this is streamlined through um, YouTube and Facebook to the, throughout the nation and also to other parts of the world. Using the media has already had impact on the people. This week I received a visit from two non-Adventists who live in the outskirts of Honiara. Oh, they have been listening to the preachings on the Hope FM and one of them is already starting to keep the Sabbath. They rang me um, and asked to come to talk to me about their desire to start to study the Bible. And we want to thank the Lord that the coronavirus situation has allowed the church to be able to, or has compelled the pastors to use the media more than previously. And we want to thank God for this and we pray that the Lord will continue to reach people through the messages 
on the Hope FM and also on the Hope uh, channel. May God bless you and may God bless the church in other missions and parts of the world. Thank you. During COVID-19, we've been looking at the challenges and the needs in society and in the church. On Sabbath morning, I've been at home, you've been at home. How have you connected? And how have you been able to share Jesus with those in your community? We at Adventist Media have been looking at this and asking, how do we help the church? What kind of resources can we create that will help you to worship on Sabbath morning and to share Jesus in your community? Today, we're going to tell you some stories about what Adventist Media are doing. And I hope that these stories will inspire you and help you in sharing Jesus through media. During this period, Moms at the Table was able to help some 6,000 moms in our community through online masterclasses, through online meetups, and even online kids activities. But a significant thing was when we created the Marketplace group during the height of the panic buying situation when moms couldn't find any essential items. They connected with other moms who could provide them with the essential items, or maybe if they knew where to get the essential items. A really significant story that stood out was when a mom couldn't find any painkillers for her sick child. She reached out and another mom was actually able to offer it to her. And it's really just encouraging to know that Moms at the Table is able to be there to help a community during such an awful, awful time of need. Digital discipleship has been existing in this space for the last four years, but never have we seen a moment like what we're experiencing right now. We know that God is going to bring beauty out of the ashes of this situation, and we can already see it happening. We find that we're no longer explaining the necessity of digital discipleship. Now we find that we're equipping people for digital discipleship. And a few of the ways that we've been doing that is through our Facebook group, through our social media platforms, and our website. We've seen a huge uptick in these platforms, letting us know that we're really serving our community right now. Another way we've been serving is through consultations, through providing support and other resources. And it's exciting because we can see that we really do have expertise in this area within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And people are really leaning on each other at this time for that expertise and that experience. We've been given the opportunity to support the church with marketing the two current evangelistic campaigns that are running online. We're using Facebook, YouTube and websites to reach out to people with video content that will introduce them to Jesus. And we've been so blessed to see the results in the last few days. Thousands of people have been visiting our pages just to find out what the content's about. During these difficult times where we're not able to meet together as a church, Adventist Record is playing an important role in keeping our community connected. I was encouraged when I received a note from Manjimup Church in Western Australia. Ross Craig, who pastors there, told me that they've got a record box with all sorts of printed materials outside, and he's let all the members and former members of the church know. He said the magazines are going like never before, and some of those missing members have even showed up on the church's live stream. Adventist Record is playing an important role in helping some of those members stay connected, and Pastor Ross is very grateful for that support. People around the division are actually looking for hope. And whether it's in the church, whether it's in homes, people are wanting to connect with something that has purpose, something that has meaning. And so we've seen a huge uptake in requests here at the Bible School. And so over the last few weeks, we've sent out 13,000 emails. We've had a request for 3,000 Bible studies. We've had countless thousands of people connect on social media with us. And so this is the new space that we as a church need to be in. And so our role here at the Media Centre isn't just simply to do all this by ourselves. We want to connect with disciple makers. We want to connect with you. We want to put our resources into your hands. In fact, just the other week, the church rang and said that they had sent out our studies to 57 other people. And that's what it's all about, putting our content in your hands so that you can be disciple makers too. That was such a fantastic report from the Adventist Media. Don't you agree, Glenn? Mm, yeah. you know, and we're really grateful for the work that Adventist Media does right around our division. Right now, we're going to go across to Fiji. We're going to hear from some young people in Suva who are doing um, 
um, some service, there being the sermon where they are at, and also right across up to the northern part of Fiji to Lombasa, where they're impacting Lombasa and serving during this COVID crisis. And we'll also go to South Australia and see a ministry of a food pantry. In times of crisis, what are some creative things that we can do to help those who are in need? We are world changers! How about you? And happy Sabbath again, everyone. Uh, we were so blessed to be able to distribute food again this week and reaching out to our brothers and sisters serving in the front line, uh, serving as doctors and nurses and police officers at the various checkpoints and our local hospital here in Masa. So, we're about to take uh, food back that we prepared and uh, stay tuned and enjoy. So as you have seen, we've already distributed our food packs at the Mombasa Hospital and at the three checkpoints at Soso Settlement. And uh, along with the food packs, as you've seen, are the little pamphlets with words of encouragement and words of hope from the Bible to encourage them and to give them uh, reassurance that God cares, that we all care and that their work is not in vain, that we 
all appreciate what they are doing for us. God bless. And may have a good week. So we are in front of our church in Trinity Gardens. Uh, and as you know, the church is locked. Uh, we, we, locked uh, we shut down everything here uh, in the middle of March. Uh, in, uh, the church is here, but we have here the church hall. This is a highly exposed point in, in, in our city and uh, many people are interested coming here and we decided to open our, to move our pantry from this little room at the back and uh, we decided to put this uh, here in, in this hall and uh, so it, it gives us more space and uh, we were able to keep the social distancing and people prefer to, uh, to come here and uh, also we had the biggest space to mm, ex expose and put more stuff on the shelves. We are very glad to, uh, to do this here and since the church is locked uh, and we don't know when it will be open, mm, I'm very happy that, that we give this opportunity pe for people to come and still mm, have this association that Center Adventist Church, uh, Adra, is helping people in the time of difficulty. This is just a good way to work in with that and better uh, have better stewardship of our facilities. It's lovely to have the extra room, but we can do the social distancing better and we've got more room to display clothes and um, other household goods that people might want, as well as food. But I also like too is that some of the folk that come along, they want to help us. They bring goods along to give away to the folk too, even though themselves probably are not that rich. So they want to participate. I love Jesus and what he's done for me and I want to do something for others. What a wonderful afternoon we've enjoyed so far with all the stories from the Pacific. Have you enjoyed it, Glenn? Oh, look, what God is doing in and through his church in the South Pacific is absolutely amazing. It really is. You know, in a previous life, I was a school teacher. I was talking to my little sister the other day, and she teaches in the Greater Sydney Conference at Mountain View Adventist uh, School. And she was saying to me that they've been visiting in Western Sydney, their students, they've been delivering things to them to help them with their learning. And you know, at this point in time, I just want to acknowledge the teachers. Yeah. Thank you teachers for the extra Zoom lessons you've been doing. Thank you teachers for the late nights, for staying in contact with our kids so that they can continue their education during this pandemic. We want to thank you for your sacrifice. And you know, um, there's actually some footage we've got from Nunawading School, where the, the, the teachers and uh, their, I think their bus driver go out, they deliver these care packages, they deliver Bibles, they pray for their children. What a fantastic way to represent um, Jesus, the way the teachers are looking after their kids. Thank you so much to Nunawading. And then we go up to the Northern Australia Conference and we go to Riverside School. R Riverside School, yeah. and yeah, the teachers have been encouraging the children to make cards, and those cards are delivered to the people around the school. And then we finish off a little bit with a great song, so stick with us. Having a little break, getting outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to open. I know, they wrapped it really well. And this is a gift from Mrs. Horsley. Mrs. Horsley. You can hold that up in front of you. <laughs> what is it? A Bible. How nice. How beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Of you want to say, Mrs. Horsley. Thank you to, and I'll show her this. Thank you, Mrs. Horsley. <laughs> At Riverside Adventure School, we are letterboxing our community with these cards to let them know we care and are praying for them.
get Jesus and stay afloat. He will calm the storm, bring out the sun for a brand new day. Jesus said, Come on, Pete. Come on, Pete. Get up and use your feet. You gotta use them. Tropical Cyclone Harold hit Vanuatu, Tonga and Fiji during this pandemic. Coming up next is a report on what happened. This year ran smoothly, uh, thinking that everything would be okay. Most of the buildings here, yeah, they are permanent buildings, but uh, because of the power of the cyclone, so powerful that most of our classrooms and dining hall, boys' dormitory, and teachers or staff houses, they were all blown off. And looking forward at all the damages that we have. I'm very heartbroken. So for the students, for all the families that are living in here. And, uh, this institution means all of meant everything to me. The school cannot uh, resume its normal classes because we have the buildings uh, are not safe for the students to get inside the classroom. Our churches have picked on us an evacuation centre. This is where most of the people run to. And uh, uh, Sarakata, for example, 
has hosted a lot of people. So far, I haven't had any news about any church member who had lost his life. I'm not going to say anything. 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 Vanuatu is, uh, is one of the countries in the South Pacific that is prone uh, to a lot of natural disasters. But this year, 2020, is an exceptional year. We are affected by uh, a few natural disasters that is beyond our ability to help ourselves. There is the asphalt in the island of Tana that is so much affecting the life of the people. And there is the, the threat of COVID-19 that has suddenly affected economy and affected the livelihood of a lot of people. And on top of that, we have the DC Harold that has struck the northern part of this country on April 6. Thousands of people have lost their homes. And as a church, we have lost schools, at least about 10 schools that we have lost, that is scattered around the islands of Pentecost, which is one of the most devastated islands. In some villages, whole villages are wiped out. The island of Amprem, the island of Sando and its adjacent islands, that includes the island of Malo, Auri, where we have one of our main high schools. What you see in this little clip represents the destruction that this country has faced and it has brought us to the place where we can no longer help ourselves. And so as the leader of the church, I am appealing to friends and families and churches around the region that can be able to help us. Just seeing the devastation in Vanuatu from Cyclone Harold reminded me of the impact of Cyclone Pam when I was living in Fiji and was president of that region and going there soon after and, and touring around, uh, same kind of impact. And at that time, the church, we as the church, helped Vanuatu uh, recover. And in our e-giving site and our e-giving app, we have an actual offering, which is called TPUM Disaster Recovery Fund. You can go there and you can help the people of Vanuatu recover uh, from the devastation of this cyclone. Coming up, we've got the work of ADRA, not just in Vanuatu, but in other parts of our division. Thank God for ADRA. COVID-19 was a term that few in our community were aware of. Now, it is everywhere and it is determining everything that we do. It is a pandemic that has put our families and our communities and our country on high alert. ADRA is no stranger to a disaster or a national emergency. As a team, we have faced fires, floods and droughts and have come through knowing that we have done the best that we could to help the most vulnerable in our communities find hope. This pandemic is no different. We are working closely with our community centre, op shops and various ADRA projects to provide the best care we can whilst keeping our volunteers, clients and customers as safe as possible. Our community pantries such as Lockyer Valley, Sandgate and Pine Rivers have implemented drive-through parcel pickups so that the vulnerable can still get the support they need. We have seen how our community centre, Adra Logan, is providing a safe place for both its clients and its volunteers. 
We have put in place innovative ways to deliver our services in difficult circumstances so that we can continue to support those who are in need amongst us. But we can't do this alone. We need you, our church family, to help us. You can volunteer at one of our ADRA project sites or activities so that our more vulnerable volunteers can stay safe. You can continue to donate to our ADRA projects who are in need of much needed funds for essential supplies. Your local church can also pitch in to connect and support those in your community who may be struggling. When we first started we did about probably 20 um, hampers here and 10 over at Laidley. Now we're doing, well this last week was just over 100 hampers. Uh, because of the coronavirus um, our need for hampers has gone up. The people are really struggling in, a, in the community and it's been a real blessing to be able to be able to provide an essential service. Our clients have been quite happy to receive a convenient service by remaining in their cars. We give out on average about 26 um, hampers every fortnight. We're averaging around about 80 to 84 baskets at the moment each week. Yes, life is a bit strange. Yes, it's a bit tough. But this one thing we do know is that this too shall pass. We're all in this together. And with God leading, we will come through. In New Zealand, many families have felt the financial strain that coronavirus has brought. Many have lost either all or a part of their income. In response, ADRA has helped people through giving food packs, grocery gift cards and mobile phone top-ups to struggling Kiwi families. We have worked with over 35 churches throughout New Zealand to mobilise volunteers and distribute packs to over a thousand families. Each pack includes contact information of the local church with hopes to reconnect in the future. Now more than ever, we are reminded that service is not confined to a church building. We have seen our church members being active in their communities and connecting with families during a time when creating connection has been both incredibly difficult and incredibly crucial. Together with our churches, we're making a difference here in New Zealand through service. If you'd like to know more about our response here in New Zealand or to donate a grocery gift card to a family in need, please visit adra.org.nz forward slash love. It's awesome to see the vision of the comprehensive health strategy in the South Pacific Division being fulfilled. Even in the unprecedented and challenging times that we are experiencing through COVID-19. Our strategy was founded on Jesus' words, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. During COVID-19, we have created 70 fact sheets, videos and articles to address the COVID-19 situation and the area of whole person health, taking our Knowledge Centre resources to 150 with more in development. In the past six weeks, we have boosted a number of our videos on Facebook and have had 1.7 million views from Australia, Fiji, PNG, New Zealand and Samoa, indicating a strong community interest in both our resources and health message. To help people make and embed positive lifestyle changes, we have created a new feature on our My Wellness app called Plans. With 286,000 views just on how to strengthen my immunity video, we have developed a 14-day Build Your Immunity plan to help our viewers put what they have learned into action. Our website, eliawellness.com, has had over 6,500 unique visitors and 57,000 page views during the past six weeks. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to go to eliawellness.com to view and share the resources with our community and download the My Wellness app. To help our members and community during this time, we have waived the fee of our key programs until 30th of June, 2020, to help people emotionally, physically, and spiritually. 
These products include Live More Project, Distress and Thrive, Forgive to Live and Retirement Ready. Over the past seven weeks, we have conducted over 40 training sessions for partners, which has resulted in 135 partners completing the training, but also setting up 190 courses across Australia and New Zealand. It's truly amazing to see how our health professionals, health advocates, pastors, staff, and chaplains have responded during these challenging times to make a difference in people's lives when they most need it. We have set up a fortnightly Zoom session called Be Restored with a mental health professional that gives opportunity for health professionals to debrief, feel supported and be lifted up in prayer. As you can see, God provides opportunities to reach out to people in challenging times. For those of you who have played a role in helping us to share this wonderful message of health, healing and hope to our members, staff in the community, I want to say thank you. In early January, based on what we saw occurring in China, we started to take steps to ensure our supply chains were secure. By the time the pandemic was declared on March 12th, our leadership teams had clear plans outlined to protect our people, secure our operations, and to continue to provide healthy food to our community. Because food businesses are an essential service, our factories have continued to operate right throughout this period. However, we have implemented social distancing on all our sites to minimise infection risk, and we have moved close to 300 staff right across Australia New Zealand, China, India, the UK and the USA to work from home. As panic buying set in during March, meeting community demand for our products became a huge challenge. Uh, all of our lines ran at full capacity, breaking all time records for production tonnages. Now that we're through that panic buying period, we are focused on rebuilding our stocks back to normal levels, and this will take a few more weeks. During the past few weeks, our charity partners have seen large increases in demand for food support. And as such, we've made significant commitments to Food Bank Australia, Kiwi Harvest in New Zealand, ADRA and various community food pantry programs. This commitment means that across Australia and New Zealand, over 2,500 charities will have access to our products. In addition to this, we've provided product support to over 15,000 frontline healthcare workers and our Vitality Works corporate health services business is providing close to 170,000 vaccinations uh, to organisations as they move to protect their staff. You know, I want to recognise the massive team effort that has been expanded in our business over the last few weeks. Uh, our team has simply done an amazing job rising to and responding to the challenges that the coronavirus situation has brought. This is our 123rd year of operation. And I reflect that Sanitarium has faced challenges like this before. Two world wars, the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918 and the Great Depression. And our experience today is much like what was reported in the Australian record during the Depression in 1931. And when asked how Sanitarium was faring, the reply was given, our output for the quarter just ended has exceeded the output for the first quarter of this year. We have been truly blessed right across our history. And this situation is no different. We have again clearly seen God's leading and guidance over the past few weeks. And for this, we give thanks and praise. To the thousands of church members who are our loyal supporters and advocates, thank you. Your support provides a massive blessing to the program of the church right across the South Pacific Division. And let me encourage you, continue to support uh, us and our products, because as we now move into a more challenging economic environment, your support and the benefit that this in turn provides to the church will be more important than ever. Thank you. We've had some wonderful reports from um, 
uh, the different parts of the division. But thank you so much to Sanitarium for that awesome report we've just had. And it's true, we're about to wrap up, but we've still got a few really good stories. And we are really grateful for all that the institutions and churches are doing to the glory of God. And before we finish, Pastor George Munoz, the Australian Union President, will share a devotional as we move into next week. Hey, Avondale family, it's Elijah here. I hope you're all safe and healthy during this confusing time in our lives. Uh, looking around, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit empty. Uh, not all of you are here, so I'm glad that some of you are starting to come back to school. I just want to give a shout out to my fellow uh, senior students for crushing your assessments while you've been working from home. And uh, I'm especially glad that you've been coming back to school because I've been looking uh, forward to seeing all of you. You know, this whole online learning thing has been a new concept for us to grasp. The whole COVID-19 pandemic took us by surprise really and we had no idea where we would be now or what the future would hold for us. But here we are, kicking term two off strong, getting back into the swing of things. For those of you who have experienced hardship in the last couple of months, don't give up. You aren't alone. We're in this together, but together we can make it through. Uh, you have friends and family around you to comfort you and support you. You have teachers and staff that you can go and talk to, communicate, console with. And of course, you have God by your side who has been there every step of the way and will continue to be there to protect you. You know, it may feel like we're down on the scoreboard, but the game's far from over. Jesus said to his disciples, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So to all of you in the community, students, staff, parents and friends, stay safe, stay strong, and I hope to see you all again soon. The Mount Druitt Seventh-day Adventist Church has been operating the Mount Druitt Food Pantry for the last five years. During this five year period, we've served many families and people in the community. This year has been a great challenge for us with COVID-19 and the impact that it has had on the church and the community. We have had a dramatic increase in families coming to us for food because many of them have lost their jobs or have had their hours reduced. Not only that, that has created a challenge for us where we've had to provide more than more food parcels. In fact, we've had 50% increase because of COVID-19, but it's also forced us to rethink how we serve people in the community. Many of our volunteers and our work for the Dole teams have been suspended, mainly because they're over the age of 65 and we wanted to protect them during this time. Therefore, with a small team, we've managed to stay open week after week, serving the people in the community and delivering and providing over 120 food parcels a week. This challenge has had us call in for extra volunteers that are younger, which has been a great help. Some of the staff from the Greater Sydney Conference and ministers have come and given us support and help, which has been really appreciated. We've received extra support from ADRA with gloves, masks and hand sanitizer, which has allowed us to offer the PPE that we've needed to be able to provide the support for our volunteers and those that have come to support us. One of the other things that we've had to do during this time is change how we serve the people that come and collect food. Usually we would have people come and line up and they would collect a number and then go and wait till their number is called. But because of COVID-19, we now offer a service where people come in their cars and are required to stay in their car and we will bring the food to them and then they can pack the food into their car. This is working really well with this system as we're able to supply more food to families in need. Some of the families that we've helped are families that go to the local school. We provide each week currently 10 parcels to Chifley College Bidwell campus which the staff come and collect from us each week and take to families that are in need. Those families that are getting the food have either lost their jobs or had their wait hours reduced because of COVID-19. This is an awesome ministry that we're doing in the community providing food but also being able to have conversations where we can talk to people about the hope and the love of Jesus as well. It's also led the opportunity for people that come to don't, are not able to go to church, can come to our church and with following the proper process can take the time 
to spend time in prayer as well. We want to thank you to our team that has been here and supported us during this time, our volunteers. Without them, we would not have been able to keep doing what we've been able to do. Hi, this is Ben, bringing you a minute of inspiration in isolation. Right now, there's not a lot of sport to watch, is there? Most sporting codes around the world have had to shut up shop because of the lockdowns that have taken place all over the world. And right now, most of us are just left with our jerseys. You know, a lot of people wear sporting jerseys, don't they? They like to put them on because it reminds them of which team they go for. It's the colors. People walking down the street can look at you and straight away, they know which team you go for. It's interesting this time of lockdown is also revealing, especially to the people that we might be isolated with, our true colors as well. When you're all locked up together, it doesn't take long before, you know, those little niggles, before things start to get annoying, before impatience grows, before we start to see our true colors, before we start to see each other's shortcomings. Jesus, one day to his disciples, while they were squabbling over who would be the greatest, said this to them. He said, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. As we're here in lockdown all together and our true colors may be coming to the top, Jesus reminds us again that if we would be his disciples, if we would follow him and his ways, then the color that we will show and that the colors people will see in our life will be his love and the love that we're able to have for each other. This has been a minute of inspiration and isolation. See you tomorrow. together we're called by the lord united for one mission in building up god's kingdom whatever be my part though humble it may seem i pledge to do my very best Transforming the Pacific is indeed a big task, 
But there is something that has worked for my life. All transformations must always begin with myself. And there are three steps, three points that have worked for me. Number one, communion. Number two, relationships. And number three, mission. Let me explain them to you. When my relationship with God is good and well and moving forward, that will no doubt affect the second point, which is my relationships. When God and the relationship with God is good, that will strengthen the different bonds that I have with those around me. And in turn, it will help me for the third point, which is to tell people what God is doing in my life. You and I sometimes may get discouraged in our day to day because of what we see. And I know it's difficult at times to maintain that relationship with God. I hope and pray that over these past weeks, when you and I have been in isolation, we've been able to spend more time with the Word of God and in prayer and communion with Him. There is a beautiful passage of Scripture that has always been a, a source of inspiration for me. Because it tells me what God will do every time I get discouraged from what I see around me. And that is found in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a prophet of God, you remember that. He is a man of God and he is in a place of isolation. Only worse, he is isolated, he is in exile indeed in Babylon. So he's in a place that he didn't want to go, with people that he did not choose, and in a situation that he never dreamed about. But listen to what God does. And I think this is one of the most wonderful things that God always will do with us. In chapter 40 of the book of Ezekiel says there that in the 25th year of our exile, this is Ezekiel writing, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th of the month, in the 14th year, after the fall of the city, on that very day the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me to Jerusalem. Now there is something beautiful about this verse. Every time you and I get discouraged from what we see around us, from the day-to-day -day struggles of life, he will always come and will do this one thing. He will take you and will lift us up from the current realities of life and He will take us and give us a picture of what is yet to come. So I think this is very, very important. He will take us away from our realities and He will inspire us once again. I like what he did with the prophet. He took him from his exile and his room and his situation and his isolation, if you want to call, call it that way, and he gave him a grand tour of the city and of the temple. He actually encouraged him and he said to him, I'm in control. In spite of what you see around you, in spite of the very fact that we don't know what will happen, I'm in control and this will take place. This is what's going to happen. Now, every time Christ does that with you and me, it is not so that we may take our minds away from the people around us, the friends and our colleagues and our neighbors exclusively and just think of that, but he's doing it so that we may have a change of relationship, that we may go back and spend time with these people and our friends and our communities and give them courage, give them strength, be with them. So there are some people that at times would like to escape this world. And all of us, sometimes we get this courage from what we see. But take courage. Remember the words of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 21, verse 28, when he says, when you begin to see these things, look up. And that looking up is so that we can gain strength, confidence, and of His courage and His presence so that we can go back 
to our communities, to our churches, to our workplaces, and begin to develop that relationship with many people around us. That is the second one. And then people will begin, no doubt, asking you, how is it that you are able to connect with God and, and then be so positive and provide hope to the rest of the community? And then you'll have an opportunity to tell people what God is doing in your life. That is what transformation is all about. First, take your eyes above and spend some time with Him through the Word of God and in prayer. Second, that will give you strength and courage and boldness to strengthen the relationships around you. And third, and third and final one, you will begin to tell them and have opportunities to tell them what God is doing in your life. May God bless you. May God encourage you. And as you look around, keep looking up. God bless. Thank you, Pastor George. Very relevant message. And as we go into the new week, we know we are the church. And through the grace and mercy and love of God through Jesus Christ, we can become a thriving Adventist movement, living our hope in Jesus and transforming the Pacific. We're wrapping up. I can't believe we've come to the end of it. I've just had such a wonderful time, have you? Oh, absolutely. Totally blessed. And we want to thank everybody. Thank you for the stories you've sent in, where you've shown to us and to our division what the Lord has been doing through you and in you in your various parts of the division. Thank you so much. And we're sorry for those of you who might have sent stuff in that we didn't have time to show. Please don't forget to share those stories with the people that you come across so that God's name will be praised and how he has worked through our church during this COVID pandemic. And as we go into the new week, I'd just like to pray for you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you for your love, your grace and mercy that you have given us through Jesus Christ. And that as we respond to Jesus, you working in our lives, we as your hand and feet can go from here and make a difference. Through the power of Jesus, we are the church. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. And have a great week in Jesus.